Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. I will be reading the foreword to The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. The foreword is written by Brandon Sanderson, who wrote the last two or so books in the in this series. And please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I would appreciate it. Forward. I used to buy my books at a wonderful little shop called Cosmic Comics in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was a magical place, like a nerdy version of Willy Wonka's mythical factory. Cosmic Comics carried not only comics, but sci-fi fantasy novels, board games, and role-playing books. Everything that a young teen of my particular disposition could want. When you walked in, there was a shelf on the right where the this where they displayed the new books that had come in, in, in that week. That's where, in the fall of 1990, I first discovered the eye of the world. I remember it being on the bottom shelf, a little yet enormous paperback. Back then, reading was new to me. I was a late bloomer in this era and was introduced to fantasy literature in the eighth grade by a teacher. I'd come to develop a voracious appetite for books and plump volumes no longer intimidate, intimidated me. I had begun watching the shelves for new books, hungry to discover something contemporary rather than, than the classics from the 70s and 80s that made up the bulk of my reading to that point. While I don't remember most of the volumes I bought, there, were, there was something special about the eye of the world. Even back then, the moment imprinted upon me so that I can di distinctly re remember picking the book up for the first time. The cover of that edition was a dynamic and adventuresome procession of characters leaving a city. Moraine leading the kids out of the two rivers. The scene was different from many of the pulp covers at the time. More dignified, and yet somehow also more confident. I bought that copy of The Eye of the World, and I still have it 30 years later. Well worn by time, well loved, I read it again, I read it again, last year in, pre in preparation for help, helping with a long-awaited television show that is currently in development. I had no idea at 15 that this would be the most important purchase of my entire life, but that's another story. Today's story isn't about me. It's about this book and why, if you're somehow on the fence, I think you should give it a read or <laughs> give it a listen if you're listening to me. The simplest reason is that The Eye of the World is an incredible book, Robert Jordan's mastery of viewpoint, prose descriptions, and world building remains among the best in the genre all these years later. There is something effortlessly majestic about the way Jordan puts you in the heads of his characters, painting the world with beautiful colors, but always filtered through the eyes of the characters. He never gets lost in the world building. It exists as an outgrowth of the characters and their passions, their drives and their wants. The eye of the world marks a major turning point in the fantasy genre. Many of the books I read upon, read up to this point, relied on long rambling prologues or dumps of world building information that, that read like a history lesson about the setting. The eye of the world marks a mature maturing of the genre. In this book, you don't ha get an encyclopedia. You get a living, breathing society crafted skillfully to never distract from the characters. Indeed, instead of that traditional encyclopedia entry of a prologue, Robert Jordan used what I considered the single most powerful, evocative, and interesting prologue in the history of the fantasy genre. Sometimes people miss how influential this little piece of writing has become. Just like many scenes and films still pay homage to the shots of Alfred Hitchcock and Orson Welles, you can find echoes of the Eye of the World's prologue and the prologues of many of most major fantasy epics, from A Song of Ice and Fire to the Stormlight Archive. And that is just the prologue. The Eye of the World and the Wheel of Time as a whole is a bridge. It marks the end of one era of fantasy and the beginning of a new one. Through the 70s and 80s, epic fantasy lived deeply in Tolkien's shadow. That's not to say that they weren't great writers during this era, 
There were tons, many of them. However, spent time exploring what Tolkien had done and seeing what else there was to accomplish in the settings inspired by his work. You'll still find echoes of the Lord of the Rings in the eye of the world. Intentional ones, judging by some of the place names Jordan used. There is a group of young people from a ruled town, chased by dark figures out of their familiar realm into a world of magic, myth, and monsters. And yet, in this story, there is no ring to carry. The magic is not an object, arcane and mysterious. The magic is the people, and the mystery their own minds and emotions. Instead of a wise demagogue sent to lead the way, as had, be had, had become common since Gandalf first puffed on his pipe, we have Moraine a deeply flawed yet he heroically determined mentor who doesn't have all the answers. And most important, while there is an evil to defeat, the truly disturbing question is whether our characters will become that evil themselves. Sauron was external, but the Dark One is inside the characters, in their minds, and tainting the very magic itself. I could speak for pages about the revolutionary magic system and the simple yet surprisingly distinctive choice Robert Jordan made by putting a woman in the mentor role of an epic fantasy novel during this era. I could talk about the fascinating social structures, the incredible, the incredible mythology and the poignant use, uses of power dynamics in the book. I could talk about how the eye of the world leads up leads us step by step out of Tolkien's shadow toward the next era of fantasy, much as the turning of the ages in these books marks the, the coming of a new dawn. At the end of the day, though, what grabbed me as a 15-year-old boy, what still grabs me every time I pick up this book, is the imagination on display. At its core, fantasy is about wonder, and you hold in your hands one of the most wonder, wondrous of them all, May you enjoy the journeys as you set out from the two rivers into magic, mystery, and monsters, and may your dreams, the ones Robert Jordan challenges you to dream, grow large enough to fill 14 volumes and a prequel of your own. Brandon Sanderson, February 2020. Hey, you guys, if you're still listening, uh, typically every Monday I will come out with a new chapter in this series. Uh, the first thing that I will be uh, reading will be the, the two prologues, uh, Ravens, which is the first one, and then the one after that will be Dragon Mount. So those will be coming out soon. Please subscribe. I do post new videos nearly every Monday, uh, sometimes more often than that. Thank you so much.